Retro Gamers and welcome to another episode of Retro Game On. Today we're looking at something a bit weird and out of the ordinary. Today we're taking a look at Saltwater Sports Fishing, released by Corsoft and Take Two Interactive in 2001. Do I like fishing? No. I really don't know why I bought this. Honestly, I just thought it would be fun for a review, but how so very wrong I was. This is an actual photo of me fishing taken in 2010, almost four years ago now. I believe that's the last time I actually went fishing in real life as well. Did I catch anything then? No. The major hump I had to deal with was that my copy didn't come with an instruction manual. This is something I've come to expect and deal with, but since this game isn't that well known, I couldn't find an online version, let alone someone else reviewing it. There was hardly anything about this game on the internet at all, so I was left to my own devices. Usually it's not so hard to just figure a game out, and for the most part the controls are simple. All of them that is, except for when it comes to actually catching a fish. Everything else I could figure out with trial and error, but a mini game starts whenever a fish bites, which I just can't get my head around. I don't think the reasoning is that I'm too thick, but then again, that's exactly what a thick person would say, wouldn't they? The little fish you start nibbling, I found just randomly moving the thumbstick would hook them. From there, as far as I can tell, you have to fight with them and reel them in at the same time, but in what manner, I don't understand. Sometimes the fish stays on for longer than usual, as it seems to be a task of balancing the stick in either direction, but it always ends in the line snapping no matter what I do. I don't understand it. It makes me want to swear, but I'll contain myself for now. To help, there are quite a few different lines and lures to choose from, which all mean about as much to me as kanji. No matter what I use, the line breaks. Every single fucking time. Huh, <laughs> whoops. Excuse the French. Did I catch a single fish while playing this? No. And that pisses me off. I suck at this game more than I do at fishing in the real world. Maybe if I had a manual it would make more sense to me, but it doesn't, so here we are. There are plenty of locations around the globe that you can supposedly eventually visit. Western Australia is available as a fishing spot, and you know how much I love my home state being in video games, as expanded upon in rally game reviews. But I can't get there. I can't even get past the first stage. I know it looks that different considering an ocean is an ocean, but I'm still disappointed nonetheless. Once you are dropped into a stage, you're given tasks like catch a certain amount of fish of a certain weight or breed, and you get to choose where to fish on a simplistic map. You're given this screen where you can use a radar to find the fish, but at the end of the day, whether a fish bites is down to luck, which is why the arcade section is balls. You're only given about 4 minutes, but you could be sitting there for up to a minute waiting just for a bastard fish to bite. The graphics are fairly basic, but there isn't much to show apart from water, a boat, and some fishes. I would hardly go and say they suck since they're usable, but not like I was blown away either. The animation of the fish is nice, I guess, but it certainly doesn't save the game. The sound design actually is sucky though. There is no music unless you get into a fruitless minigame reeling in a polygonal fish, and that is bland and uninspired. The sound effects are spread wide and far. You may hear the odd seagull and gurgle underwater, but nothing else besides from the wheel, which isn't exactly a stellar thing to listen to. Just like the gameplay, this game looks and sounds boring. I'm very obviously not the target market here, but this is my video so I'm going to start my opinion. This game loses points because it's hard to pick up and play, the gameplay is boring and repetitive, and it's based off a mundane task. If you want to go out and do some recreational fishing, why play a game when you're likely able to do so in real life? Majority of people live near oceans, rivers, lakes, and all sorts of other bodies of water. I just don't see the point in this, at least in real life if you catch something you can make fish soup or crab sticks. I thought this would be a laugh, but honestly I'm just full of buyer's regret. Spend the money you would pay for this on an actual rod. Thanks for watching viewers and sorry for the unusually negative review, but damn, it wasn't without merit. If you liked what you saw, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe button so all my videos come straight to you, which are usually released once a week. I've also run a blog on retro gaming for several years now, click that link if you're up for some reading. Most recently I wrote about how to find cheap retro games and my bitchin' thoughts about resellers. Otherwise there is my Facebook page where I post updates about this channel and blog quite frequently, and yeah, that's about it besides with some links to my two previous reviews. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll hopefully catch you next time. Hey, JD, look at the camera. JD, JD. Come on. You're a star, baby. You're a star. <laughs>